Uh, my name is Matthew, uh, also known as Creation. Uh, I reside in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Miskwachi, Wiskigan, Treaty 6. Uh, Cree First Nations, uh, my background, also Vietnamese, where, is, where my handle kind of, we'll I guess we'll probably speak on that later. But uh, um, yeah, I've been dancing for, you know, 20 years. Um, you know, more of just like the love of the dance, of course, competitively in my, you know, in my teens and in uh, in my twenties, and um, now just like uh, it's reconnected me with my culture. So like uh, coming from my indigenous background, I'll be able to share that with some of the questions that you asked though too. But uh, um, yeah, just uh, the journey through hip hop, man. Just wanting to learn. Uh, my first taste was probably like five years old. So. So ever since then, that's kind of been the, the get-go from there. But, uh, but definitely um, what got me into this is, you know, community, is uh, mm. being able to connect with other people, like-minded people. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it basically got me into DJing. It got me into making beats. It got me into hosting events. And, and uh, right here, Edmonton, Alberta. Um, yeah, man. Nice, nice. Can you uh, can you take us through a bit of like your early years, like how you met, how you got into the culture, and like what introduced it to you or whatever? Yeah, yeah, all good, man. Um, so for me, my mom, my late mom, uh, Diane Wood, uh, Good Fish Lake, uh, originally from, and that's you know my 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 lineage, is uh, uh, she introduced me to to ceremony, to powwow, round dances, in, in my culture uh, since birth. So. Uh, I was always heavily, you know, surrounded by, you know, dance, ceremony, and culture itself. And that's kind of like, you know, that's, you know, the origin story of like what got me into really loving music and dance. And then I would say uh, when I was about five years old, we had a, a skating rink. Uh, it was uh, the roller rink uh, called Sports World. And this is like 88. Um, and I saw, you know, I was, um, I think it was like a party or something or, or just a, you know, family gathering, all, all of our cousin relatives want to go out and, and I was five years old and I was, I was terrified to, to like put skates on me and, and, and go skating. So, uh, the whole thing of that, why I'm sharing that is cause I got put into the little, the waiting box or, or just on the side to, to kind of just watch. I was terrified. I know. I remember like having tears. I was definitely crying. And, uh, so, you know, my Ma Dukes, you know, put me on the side so you can watch, you don't have to skate, I'm not going to force you to do something you don't want to do. Yeah. And, uh, and it's really crazy. Like for me, a lot of like my memories definitely, you know, pull from being five years old. Like I could vivid, vividly, you know, strongly remember a lot of, uh, of things that happened in that, in that era, that, that state of my life or that time in my life. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as I was watching, I saw people in the middle. People are all, you know, roller skating, zooming by, you know, dancing while they're roller skating. This is the four wheels. I'm not talking about the, the, the one line, but mm -hmm. the four wheels, and which is really crazy, too, today, is that it's uh, become, uh, it's come popular again. Yeah. Not that it ever died. It's always been alive, you know, just like breaking. It's something that I've, you know, been doing more research, and I've been like, yeah, I want to reconnect with that. But going back to <laughs> being on the sideline is uh, I, I looked in the middle and all of a sudden I saw these people like spinning, like spinning on their backs, spinning on their head, doing like hand glides, all these, you know, things I didn't quite understand at the time as a kid. I was just like, wow, they're spinning on their back. What are they doing? I didn't know it was a dance or anything, mm -hmm. even though like there's music. I just thought, you know, these people are, these people are weird. They're crazy, you know, <laughs> and they weren't doing what the people are doing on the outside, like skating in a circle all the way mm -hmm. around and, and dancing. But they were, you know, they were dancing in the middle. And uh, I just remember like that, just like to this day, and something that really impacted me. And, and, and I knew, like, I didn't know at the time, but I was like, wow, that's really cool. And so, you know, leaving that spot and then, you know, going to other gatherings that such as ceremony, like round dances and powwows, uh, there was a similar like energy to, the, to, that, to that roller rink that I, that I saw. And I couldn't quite pinpoint it. But now I can, now that I matured and kind of like I could reassess or uh, reflect on the, on that on that experience. And as a kid, I just remember like going to a powwow and or a round dance, 
and then because the circle happens also you know in powwow and round dances is that uh in my head as a kid i was like yo where's the people who come in the middle and do all the spins you know like where's the heads like where, i didn't know what it was called i just knew like they just spun on the ground yeah and so in my head just being as like imaginative as i was i was like just waiting like waiting for those people to show up thinking that because the circle was just exactly like the roller rink that the people that were there were going to show up to, to the power i just like i thought all the whole world you know was connected we all yeah, were, like yeah, the yeah. same you know like i just figured like we all everybody knew each other in that kind of sense because my world mm -hmm. was very you know it was very very condensed being in my involved in my with you know being raised by my mom but as a little kid you think you know as far as you could see that's the world you know yeah, yeah exactly so so yeah i just really figured that uh these dancers would show up uh, and then start doing their spins and so then when they didn't show up as a kid i was like well maybe if i go in and then start doing some of the moves they were doing <laughs> they're gonna show up so i mean i mean i'm five years old i can't you know I, I didn't know how to spin i didn't know any techniques but i started dragging myself on the ground doing like this like you could like a turtle, but like dragging my legs and like yeah, yeah, just yeah. going in a circle. And I'm looking around, I'm like, yo, where, where are these dancers at? But then, you know, didn't show up, but then, uh, you know, still being there for, 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 for being involved in my culture. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom was like, get off the ground, you're being silly and you're getting clothes dirty. And then, uh, you know, fast forward, going into my teen years, then that's when it really struck. That's when I started seeing like, you know, movies uh, with breaking, and it just made me have a flashback right back to being five years old. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, seeing like much music and Rap City, that was something yeah. that another like uh, sourced for me because I'm in Edmonton, Alberta. And this is like, this is, we're considered oil town, you know? So I feel mm -hmm. like the energy here is like, is very like, we're like the Texas of, 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 of Canada, you know? Right. And uh, it's very like country, hick style. and. And it's all about hockey and, and all that stuff. But uh, uh, for me, yeah, just getting that, that source or learning from someone that had that those those skills, there wasn't, you know, for me, there I didn't have that connection at the time being, you know, from my teen years. It was just something that I would see in, like, magazines, you know, Source Magazine, uh, mm -hmm. Word Up Magazine, uh, you know, just little things that I would catch also from my relatives that would like share with me. And basically, you know, my relatives introduced me to, to, to more hip hop. They hmm. gave me tapes. Uh, you know, I remember like Wu-Tang tapes, you know, like there's Gangstar, uh, even MC Hammer, you know, <laughs> um, just stuff like that. It was kind of the, the heavy influence of seeing like, uh, I even remember watching like Saturday Night Live and seeing like MC Hammer on there and being like, yo, that's what I wanna do. Like these guys are crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. like the energy that came with it. And then there was something to it that as well that I didn't quite connect it. Now that I, you know, then I'm mature and, and I understand it a lot more is why I was drawn towards it because my mom uh, uh, introduced me to my culture, you know, since, since birth. And so as a, as a young tiny tot, you know, we call them tiny tots when you're like five and and just your little a little young one you know and when you go to a powwow if you uh if you if even if you don't have regalia if you go in the middle and when it's uh, they call out the tiny tots uh after you dance they give you five bucks so then it was like nice. yo i get candy i get some get some toys you know what i mean i'm gonna get some glow sticks you know all these little things that you know little little prizes and stuff that you yeah, yeah, yeah. you go to a powwow uh, especially like there's you know powwow is there could be ceremony uh there could be traditional powwows but also competition powwows as well. So mm -hmm. um, it just like the more I matured, I started to realize that's why I was pulled into this dance, you know, mm -hmm. what everybody known as breaking. Yeah. Um, and it just like, it was the connection. It was the parallel of this dance that why, why I continue to, to still, you know, practice today. Or I don't even say practice. I can't say that those words because I'm more just dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really, you know. Yeah, I get that. Uh, but uh but yeah, that uh, in my teen years, that was something, you know, all my relatives, they were into hip hop and I just, I, I, caught, I caught the bug. I wanted to learn yeah. more, you know? Yeah. I really wanted to to dig deeper and, and do my homework and just find more people that were involved in this dance. And it just so happens that uh, um, the indigenous community 
it just it spread like wildfire. Like mm-hmm. you know how you know you can go in New York and all the boroughs and you could find you know it was the the mission for the dancer to find who was the top dancer in that borough and battle him. You know it was like that that samurai you were like you know that ronin you were trying to find who was top and 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 go battle whether it be the individual or crews right so so for me out here that same energy existed because uh all the indigenous communities you can go to any reserve back like in the in the mid 90s late 90s and you could find someone who who danced who did this mm. who did this style and a lot of it here though too was all about like power and like blow ups a lot mm. a lot of people will know that our 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 uh, community our area was known for like power moves and like spin moves and so so yeah like at, at one point like i was saying like you can go to any reserve and there's lots of reserves in my area and even throughout canada you know a lot of natives really took took this this uh this 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 dance style the the how you carry yourself in hip hop culture they're really drawn towards it because um as you know many know the history of hip hop comes from oppression and so uh living in canada uh as an indigenous person we were you know we were definitely hit with a lot you know discrimination pressure yeah, yeah. genocide you know uh there's a lot of history yeah. uh, of how canada was built on on the backs of indigenous the black community also the asian community though too with the railroads and all that stuff but i won't get too much into that but uh <laughs> um you know these are things that are definitely help you understand you know for yeah, me for sure. to, to the history and why i continue to dance and why you know why i still um you know love to share and 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 you know do as much as i can in terms of giving back because uh, as an indigenous person you know in our in my culture it's never about take 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 it's about yeah. like whatever you take you also have to give back you know and these teachings all are embedded into things uh such as the medicine wheel teachings and also the seven sacred teachings which talks about you know there's courage there's love humility truth wisdom uh you know knowledge uh the like the whole the whole how how you carry yourself basically and how right. you treat others yeah. And so all these things are, are, are things that were taught to me at a young age. And then later on, I started to really see the connection of, of hip hop culture and how, how you know, hip hop, um, the, the, the hip hop that I've started to really, you know, learn more about was about uplifting community, you know, um, uh, a, tools, a way to, you know, uh, to, 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 to put more love out there than than there is hate, you know, because a lot of violence, especially even within hip hop, there's always the excuse me, the double side. There's also the other side of the coin though too, you know. So yeah, yeah. there's the mainstream hip hop, and then there's the hip hop that we're we're heavily involved in though too, is community and and uplifting the people and just giving the people a voice, you know. So um, as an indigenous and Vietnamese kid, young kid growing up. Uh, I just wanted to fit in some, like, I also wanted to, like, belong somewhere, you know? And so hip-hop was, like, it was that for me. I, and it was also, like, rebellious stages, though, too, because even for my own community, being, like, you know, which a half or people will call or 50-50 right. or, you know, mixed race is uh, sometimes you get, you know, you get bullied from both sides. Mm-hmm. And so for me, um, I, you know, me and my mom, my mom was a single parent growing up. And raise me so you know for me i just like looked at myself as like native to the to the core you know Mm -hmm. and not really acknowledging my asian side because i always got picked on for that even from my family or even through my vietnamese side you know so um growing up i just wanted to like belong somewhere Mm -hmm. and then when hip-hop came along it was like yeah this is for me i think that this is it this is like this is what i want to do and i even told like my relatives like, you know, my cousins, even my mom. I was like, yo, ma, this is this is what I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life and and uh this is this is, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a professional at this. Of course you get the chirps, you know, the mom gives me tough love. My late mom gave me tough tough love, mm-hmm. give me a good chuckle and be like, Yeah, 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 just quit making all that damn noise banging on the floor, you know? But um and even my relatives just having a good laugh because 'cause we didn't have, you know, the the resources to like to learn about, you know, Hip hop because we're we're in the middle of basically Timbuktu, you know, mm-hmm. Edmonton, Alberta is known as mm-hmm. you know Hicktown. So 
So, you know, I get the laughs and chirps, but, uh, you know, perseverance and, and, and resiliency though too is, is kind of just, I really loved it. It was something that like when I saw it and then when I started to see the connection of where, what it would have, what the whole co- the culture embodied though too, how like the DJ, the dancers, the MC, the graffiti writers, these all just like, it was like a big explosion in, in my head. The fact that, that this culture existed and that, you know, the parallels between uh, being indigenous as well, you know, and the history where it comes from and the oppression that, you know, that happens, that happened in, in New York and the communities where it comes from, you know, so, so it was a way for me to just like, I didn't need, I didn't need to be like this jock. I didn't need to be like, uh, the smartest kid in the room. Although like for me, I definitely identify as a nerd growing up because I was always into like nerdy things like, like definitely video games and, and like, like model, like car models, or even like, I remember getting into like the, the figurines and it was like orcs and like uh army yeah. guys and like painting them <laughs> like warhammer yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so <Yeah>. hype <laughs> yeah man so yeah, was it was because like you know a couple friends you know they were into that <clears throat> yeah and then just the fact that the arts the art aspect of it and like how you yeah, could yeah. just like create your own army mm. i thought that was badass you know i was like yeah. yo that's that's something i want to do but then realizing later on though too like it, it's mad expensive and, and my <laughs> Ma Dukes wasn't wasn't trying to like pay into that, yeah, and also like want to keep me safe though too, because you know I, I you know the neighborhoods that I lived in wasn't always the the most positive. Not that we at least I lived in like you know hard a hard hard life, but uh, just definitely the the areas I lived in were the inner city, and just like you know the the, the places where I lived, where there was always something going on, you know. So uh, she wanted to keep me safe, so she wasn't trying to like put funds into my war, my war hammer, <laughs> but she was definitely, uh, well, my safety. So she put me into like Taekwondo classes, but, nice. uh, skip that because that's nothing to do with hip hop. But, uh, I mean the connection of, you know, martial arts, definitely there's a connection to hip hop, yeah. but, uh, to speak on the story is, uh, yeah, it was just something I wanted to really embrace. I started to see, uh, more of a happening, uh, at school dances, there was more like native kids, uh, uh, embracing this dance style, and there was a few key people that I linked up with later on, and, and we, you know, we formed a, a crew out here in Edmonton, and then started traveling, and uh, it was cats like uh, my, uh, my brother James Jones, uh, uh, Lee Beaver, uh, Jake, uh, Jordan Roasting, uh, and then later on meeting up with like Shane Martell, and these are all like indigenous cats and the native uh, indigenous uh, artists and, and, and cats that I, that I grew up with or, or grew, growing up and knowing about. And then it was the ciphers and it was, it was getting into the dance that where I got to knew, know more of these people or we got to know each other. And then we realized like, yo, you're native. Yo, I'm native. Yo, let's make a crew, bro. Like this is like, it, it just meant to be, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, given some opportunities, you know, like, uh, especially through James, he really had a an early career through through dance at a really young age. I, he started traveling like 13, 14, uh, and uh, all the way to now. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> for me, I was just doing like you know backspins. I was doing the worm, uh, coffee grinder. Couldn't didn't quite know like the the whole blueprint yet. You know the whole the foundation of it and. Uh, and everybody was doing power moves. And at the time, I wasn't really, you know, really keen on. I mean, I wanted to learn all the power stuff, though, too. But uh, at the same time, in my head, I was like, yo, I want to be, I want to do my own style. How do I, like, how do I, like, uh, how do I contribute to this, you know, this collective of people that I've linked up with? And I don't want to look the same. That was mm. something I already knew mm. as learning about powwow culture as well. Because in the dance, we have competition. We have we have traditional, but uh, but and there's many styles within powwow culture, and a lot of the dancers have their own style. So I already knew about originality through my culture. So as soon as I got into hip hop, into breaking, uh, I knew I needed to have my own style. So then I wanted to like go and search for more than just like head spins and flares and all that, which our our community, our city was known for. 
and it wasn't like till like we started to watch like VHS tapes, seeing like cast like Remind, which was like mind blowing to me because it was another native like on a whole like different like dimension at the time frequency, and 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 just Style Elements crew, a, a lot of West Coast crews too, you know, like um, uh, just like seeing them on VHS tapes and kind of being like, whoa, these guys do that over there. Like, damn, I didn't know that existed. Like, these crews yeah. are over there. And it just opened up these portals and it opened up my mind to being like, yo, what's this stuff they do on top? Because I wasn't used to seeing anybody do anything on top. It was right away to the ground, right away to, like, power moves and dynamic moves. And so once I saw that, I was, like, seeing cats like Remind, you know, Crumbs, Po One, all these guys. And, like, style elements definitely, you know, was a huge influence for me. Um, and then many other crews from the West Coast, though, too. Um, but uh, but that, that was kind of like my first kind of VHS tape, seeing like Freestyle Session uh, 2, Freestyle Session 3, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Good I had ones. those tapes. Those I got those ones. tapes. Yeah. It was thanks to also JJ because he's the one who traveled and then brought those tapes back home to our to our city. Right. So he was our, he was our resource, though, too, because he was like he was traveling at a very early age and getting into these spaces and getting access to tapes. But then, yeah, we would just sit home and back into our, you know, back into the garage at JJ's spots or our other homie spots. And we would watch these VHS tapes and be like, yo, we got to learn. We got to learn. And like, not necessarily like bites, but because we knew like biting right away, that's like frowned upon, you know? So mm. it was, uh, we wanted to like, just get inspiration and then hit the lab and be like, yo, I want to create, like, create something off of, like, something, you know, your the influences that you had. So, um, yeah, it was, like, those, those, those times right there is what helped, you know, lead me into, like, wanting to, like, learn more of the dance, uh, you know, be, be a practitioner and, and, and find places, find other people who dance. And then I started to roll with a, a, a crew, uh, it was more of like a performance, you know, going to different reserves, conferences, and schools. And it was about empowering our, our the youth. Mm -hmm. And so I was totally like wet behind the ears. I only knew a couple moves, but JJ, you know, he saw the fire burning in me and I really wanted to dance. And so he was like, yo, you should come on and do a show with us and, and talk to these kids. I was like, yo, I don't know how to talk to anybody. I was totally like not a social person at all. And I only had a couple moves, but because, you know, someone gave me that opportunity and believed in me, I was like, all right, yo, let's go. And it was an opportunity to leave like the Edmonton. And I've never, at that time, I've never left the city other than going to my reserve or going to powwows around the surrounding community. So, so, you know, um, given the opportunity to travel and then do shows, we went to places like, uh, um, California to different reserves around there, but mainly around Alberta. A lot of our our shows and performances were at conferences and schools uh, mm -hmm. and reserves around Alberta. And then uh, we would do performance. We would do you know the MC would do his thing, and then uh, we would dance. We would get our, our our opportunity to to showcase. And then there'd also be a component where we were just sitting in a sharing circle, and all of us would share like how we got where we we were today. And at that time, you know, fast forwarding, going into that opportunity, that's when I was like, you know, in 18, 19, 20. And that's when I was like, yo, I'm taking this dance serious. In my 13 to, you know, to 17, it was more just like for fun. And it wasn't like something that I knew that would allow me to like take this like into a career. Even as a kid, when I told my parents, you know, my mom or my, my relatives that I was going to do it as a full-time career, it was just me being very you know, naive at the time thinking that like, I am going to learn this right now. I'm going to learn it overnight, you know? But yeah, then yeah. I realized, you know, it took, it takes time. You got to meet other people that are, you know, involved in this. And then I did, I did that. I started to, to attend uh, more events that there was more other, other dancers, other, other uh, people who, who did breaking. And then there was uh, competitions that popped up between Edmonton and Calgary as well, the rivalry, you know, uh, but also traveling out to Vancouver and then um, being exposed to that scene and then just seeing like, whoa, people are crazy out over here. That means I just need to practice even harder back where I'm from. And so then 
the opportunity to travel though too in all these different major cities across Canada, the United States, uh, it was our duty, our due diligence to find, you know, who was like the top crew in that city or if where, where, where was the practice spot. And a lot of times though too in that era, you know, not everybody's going to invite you to, to their practice. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. unless you're a crew or you're down with them affiliated in some way or you're cool in some way, you know, they, they knew you were cool, then they would invite you to their practice. And luckily we kind of had that past though too because we were all indigenous crew and a lot of people that we seeked or we found out about, they were, you know, they were, had an indigenous background or they were just like, oh, yo, natives, yo, y'all, y'all are dope. I know about y'all. I learned about you in school. And it was like, well, you maybe learned a bit about us, but, but uh, you probably didn't learn, you know, the truths, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get, I don't want to get too much into that either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be a whole inter- other interview, but, um, but yeah, kind of just like fast forwarding through the timeline is, you know, going from my teens into my early twenties, that's kind of what really, you know, even gave me the, the, the energy and, and, and the bug even stronger to like just keep digging and then just traveling. That's what really mm-hmm. opened my mind and helped me to develop my style though too by meeting like, you know, other people in their city and the top people or just people that, that were like regarded high up there or their, their names was tied to like, yeah, that, that person like wins all the battles or you, you don't want it, you know, like that person's a problem, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, it was like, yeah, every time we traveled, we just, we just like would send out the bat signal. And if we got a response, then we would show up, we'd show up, you know, we had like the B-boy forms back in the day, like uh, B-boy world and oh, freestyle yeah. session. So we didn't have Facebook, you know, you didn't have, you know, we had like uh, the messenger and, and, and MySpace and, and hi-fi things all like this. Definitely dating <laughs> myself right here. Uh, you know, now nah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's what really helped us like be exposed more to like the 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 true essence of hip hop, that exchange. And it helped us expand our minds that it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just us. It wasn't just us mm-hmm. in Edmonton. There was many people. We already knew there was many dancers around there, but you know, when you're in a secluded area, you don't think about other people. You're trying to like you're trying to like focus on you, but then knowing that other people are practicing, that was the energy that helped you get good though too, because if you're going to show up to other person's city in battle, you didn't want to go there, you know, not prepared. So, mm-hmm. you know, traveling to places like Vancouver, Toronto, even Ottawa, uh, helped us in our early, like the early two thousands helped us kind of like mold us and, and, um, and challenge us to be like, I, you know what, you know, now, now you travel and you see these other natives over here, what are you going to do? You know, like, why are you going to, what's going to keep you dancing? And it was like, yo, I don't want to be whack. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to get smoked by these people next time I see them, you know? So, you know, there was many moments though too, we would just pull up and find a club and we didn't know anywhere anybody's at and then stumble upon, you know, like cast like crazy smooth, you know, to tell, tell a story about like, I think it was like 03, 2003. We just pull up to this club. We did a show in Ottawa. We didn't know anybody in Ottawa. And we're like, yo, maybe if we go to a club, at that this time though too that was a more of a kind of a, a relevant or what's the word i'm looking for it, it it was more often to happen that you would meet another like you know b-boy right, right. b-girl at the club not you know not as much as today especially yeah, yeah. with the whole you know situation but uh that was like all right let's just show up to the club and maybe we'll find someone mm-hmm. and sure enough we just go in there we're we, you know we're walking in there like we're mobbing through and we're like yo we're the shit you know like we're we're like, we're badass. We're like, we're just going to take this spot over. We start breaking and yo, crazy smooth shows up mm. and we're like, yo, who's this guy? He starts dancing around us, like around circles around us and just like top rocks and just like yeah. giving us all like, he just knew too. He totally baited us because <sighs> he saw us from afar. He saw us walk in and been like, oh, I know what these guys are about. And then of course us being a crew, we're like, yo, we could smoke anybody. I mean, we held our own. I'm not going to like talk on here in this interview and be like yo you know crazy smooth like wipe this on the floor you mop this up but you know we held our own but then it was that exchange it was that exchange to break the ice and then be like yo uh, where are you guys from i'm from here and i know about these people and then he started to name out names like p 
people that didn't know at the time he started t telling us about because we told him that we're in indigenous and he's like yo you got to meet up my brother q rock he's a he's a he's a native out here who's in touch with his culture and he he uh he he puts he he uh he puts both breaking and and powwow culture together and right there that was like that's what we were looking for we were looking for that 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 frequency where we're trying to figure out, you know, we knew that we were, you know, we come from the indigenous community, but we didn't quite understand or it didn't click with us that we already had, you know, a resource to pull from. We didn't know powwow could be our influence to create our own style. So it was connections like that, that kind of connected the dots and then to meet more <clears throat> indigenous, more natives that were, that were, you know, practicing in this way and, and involving their, their roots. And then um, that was the jump off, man. That was really kind of the jump off for me because then I started thinking about like smudge. You know, when we, we smudge, it's to, to cleanse your mind, body, and soul. Um, it's a way of prayer. You know, think of loved ones who you lost or you pray for the new ones that are coming in as well. Or if you just know someone that's going through a rough time, you know, you want to put good energy out there for them. And mm -hmm. so we would we would smudge. We would have a smudge bowl and our sage or sweet grass or uh, there's many different medicines you could use to smudge. And so like the actions of smudging is like cleansing your mind, what you see, what you hear, you speak, your heart, and also you know everything around you. It's kind of like it's like creating a force field. And mm -hmm. so instantly when when you know Smooth talked about you know Q Rock and then also meeting Q Rock later down the road. And other, also other natives in our journeys, um, it was just like, yep, this is this is us. This is our style. This is we we've been doing this. Native people been doing hip hop. Just it, it's through our culture, you know. We've been mm -hmm. dancing, we've been doing graffiti, we've been doing music, you know. We've been bringing community together, you know. We've been creating hope. We we, we create that that light and, and a way to be proud of your heritage, and so 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 it just. It just, it was a big bang theory right there, basically, you know, it, it, it helped us be proud of who we are, uh, who we are and just find ways to like, uh, inspire others though, too, as being like, yeah, you could be, you could do hip hop and you could be native. And one thing that was always a thing from relatives in our community was, uh, you know, teasing and chirps, you know, that tough love was, was like, if we did a lot of times when you're trying to learn hip hop people would be like, yo, why are, you, why are you trying to be black, bro? Like, why are you trying to act black? That was always a thing. Mm. And, and now I definitely, you know, have, at that time, I didn't know how to, like, answer that, though, too, because, yeah, in my mind, though, too, it was like, yeah, it does come from, come from the black community. But, but now that I'm mature and, and understand it a lot more, it's like, yo, Native's been doing this, this style. We've been doing hip-hop. Just again, like I go back to that. We just it wasn't called hip hop. We were we were practicing practicing our culture, and we've done dances, and we've and and a lot of our our, our dances are also have been an influence on on hip hop as well. You see it um, with a lot of like the classic um, artists that you know they were you know they would sometimes fortunately they would you know put a headdress on at the time. You know it was it was okay. But now that we start to really understand the cultural appropriation and it's not, you know, as a fly thing as before, but, you know, our fashion, the way we dressed in our, 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 our traditional attire and even the way we danced. Some of the original dancers, when they saw, you know, power dancers, they wanted to grab that bounce. Mm -hmm. And so you could see it in the boyoing. You could see it in even some of the terminologies called the Indian step, the Apache step. These are all influences from a lot of the young generation when they were creating hip hop was to be like, yo, yo, you see those moves? <clears throat> I want to do it just like that. Just like even in martial arts, you know, the influence coming from there, yeah. coming from tap dance. And so um, at the time I didn't quite understand that or have that connection or be able to explain it that way. Mm -hmm. But now that, you know, I'm 37 today and um, I could definitely, you know, I could, I could share that and share that that energy and, and, and my influence and how it's helped develop my style because 
even today like uh I, i'm not as active as like you know battling or mm-hmm. or or um yeah being active in that sense but definitely you know i'm out there in ciphers i'm out there trying to share as much as i can with the dance to to show people that this is a dance first and foremost and then showing them that parallel as a grass dancer as a traditional grass dancer and showing them you know top rock rocking and showing them how they complement complement each other very well and so um hope i'm not being too long-winded here <laughs> no it's 